What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Grunt Speak Live, episode 140, filmed on location in Joe Biden's America, where the economic markers are made up and the baby formula does not matter. Baby formula is like a, a feminist's body count, right? <laughs> I'm toxic male. That's Terrence Pop. What's up, you filthy fist fuckers? Oh, God. <laughs> we got a show for you. So is that oh. better or worse than being a power bottom? Yeah, here's the story. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, uh... I just got to Fort Lewis, and I'd been there maybe three weeks. And uh, one of the guys we were hanging out with had a car, and he was going to leave to go to Seattle for the day. So three of us got in his car and went to Seattle. And we're hanging out. You know, we got pizza, went to Pike's, Pike Street Market and stuff like that. And, then, you know, we went a couple blocks away, and we decided to go into this establishment and get a beer. And uh, my buddy Seabold is like, hey, uh, this place is kind of empty. Uh, and it was kind of weird looking. And then we see these stools with these things sticking out of them. Oh. And Seabold's like, hey, what's up with those stools? The guys, <laughs> the bartender's cleaning the glass. He goes, oh, them stools are for fisting. You never heard of fisting before? Is that like we were all like like <laughs> Seabolt's like uh <laughs> no and where, where's the exit? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. That's I had totally awful. forgotten that story, you <laughs> bastard. Why'd I remember that? Uh Oh, that is so messed Gotta up. Start drinking now. Okay, so is that? I, I guess, and and that you know the the loose gay butt twerking queers community is that better or worse than felching? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't uh, get out of there fast enough. I felt dirty. I thought the music would have done it. You know the guys, yeah. you know, with the assless chaps and the cop outfits. <laughs> there was like no, there was only one or two people in there. It looked it wasn't. It was like in the afternoons, like five, oh, six. Oh, okay. So if it was karaoke night, it would have been a dead giveaway. <laughs> Apparently, there it, it got nuts, right? <laughs> no pun intended, right? <laughs> Don't die me, man. Yeah, right around eight o'clock. <laughs> uh, needless to say, we got the hell out of there, Ooh. and uh, uh, we got back to Fort Lewis, and we actually went to the Jag and told them that uh, we need to add that to the "do not go there" list. <laughs> And they're like, why? Did they rip you off? I'm like, uh, it's kind of a gay bar, and they do, like, public fisting. He's like, oh, oh, yeah. Was, yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> and literally, sure as shit, you know, I got, you know, they get the paper in Fort Lewis. Oh, it's so nasty. And in the back of the paper, they have all the places you're not supposed to go to. And if you get caught going there, you're going to get hemmed up. With oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, the gay bar and gay bar fist in the ass was on there. Thank God. Well, on the flip side, if you ever had to go back there for any reason, you just bring a container of Crisco and you never have to pay for a drink. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Don't die on me, man. Ah, you got me laughing. <laughs> you got me laughing, man. Uh, I think it's some of that uh, Mediterranean spice uh, clogging up your your pipe works up there. Maybe, maybe. You get uh, what was it? Boffs, right? Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, this is Middle Eastern you, joint. Ooh. For those of you that don't know, um, I make a habit of going to like hole in the wall bars and restaurants and trying the food, and you'd be surprised at just how either a shitty the food is because. Probably half the time it's shitty. Yeah, like it's a hole in the wall for a reason. Yeah, sometimes. and like there's some like there's some of it. Some of them are just mediocre, but every once in a while you go someplace where it's so fucking good. And that's boffs. And that's boffs. Oh. Now we got Mediterranean restaurants all over the place here around Detroit. Yeah, because <laughs> we're like uh, you know a hop skip and a cunt hair away from uh, the Middle East 2.0. Yeah, Dearborn, otherwise known as Dearborn. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is. <laughs> food is just good, man. Oh yeah. We should do we should do a, a start a channel called the Hole in the Wall. <laughs> we just like go to places and try their food. I love how you describe drive through food that way. What? It's a, it's a hole that you get your food through. 
It's literally a hole in the wall. <laughs> um, actually, my daughter did that when yeah. she was like 11. Because I always had Del Taco in the car and stuff. Yeah. She's like, Dad, are you eating Del Taco again? That's not good for you. I'm like, yeah. yeah. She's like, you know, like, those are just hole in the wall places. <clears throat> and I'm like, what? Del Taco's like a national chain. She goes, no. You drive up to a hole and they give you food. Thus, it's a hole in the wall. And I'm like, <laughs> That's God brilliant. damn. You are spot on there. And that is faultless logic. It is. I thought it was pretty oh, funny. Oh, man. And then a lot of their friends are going to grow up and get older, and then they're going to perform at the glory hole in the wall. Let's hope not. I hope not, too. It's yeah. awful. That is just a crazy <laughs> fucking thing. Yes. Yeah, so for those of you watching this uh, stream on YouTube, you don't get the the real title, unfortunately. You know, pro probably the same thing with Twitch, too, because, you know, Twitch, they outlaw the word simp and things like that. So uh, Death by a Thousand Sluts, I knew, would be a little bit too spicy for those <laughs> platforms. <laughs> if I really wanted to go for broke, it'd be hashtag me too, death by a thousand cunts. But, you know. Yep. You got to give a little, take a little. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Listen, it's nothing's okay. perfect. You're never going to hit it 100% of the time, 100% of the time. No. Maybe in your life, the stars will line up and you'll hit the target a few times, 100% dead center. <laughs> but uh, only the rarest of the rare can do it uh, many, more than just a few times in their lifetime. Amen to that. <clears throat> uh, speaking of one in a million, we have a nice story from you for you from Germany. But first, I just want to sh show you a butt. That's a nice butt. That is a very nice butt. Mm -hmm. uh, hallelujah. Woman who poked holes in condoms handed six-month jail sentence. Was it suspended? I don't know. <clears throat> Let's see. Found guilty of sexual assault after poking holes in her partner's condoms without his knowledge in what a judge has described as an historic case. A court in Western Germany found a woman guilty of sexual assault and handed her a six-month suspended sentence. Oh, shocker. See, that's some horse shit right For purposefully there. damaging her partner's condoms. No, it should have been an 18 to 21 year sentence, not suspended, because that's exactly what would have happened to the dude had she been successful. Yeah, he'd been turned into a wage slave for 18 to 21 years. It could even be longer. And I don't know the laws in Germany. Yeah. And I love how they call it a historic case, but then they suspend the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, really, women get a pass across the entire world. Oh, yeah, they do one-third the time for the same crime as yeah. a man on average. And it's yeah, But that's here in the United States. Over in India, like, these women do some egregious fucking shit and get a complete pass. Oh, yeah. I, I, like, I can't read their language, but every once in a while, I have one of the fans in India translate something and send it to me, and I'm like, oh, my God! Why? Because they have, like, dowry rights and all kinds of, like, all, all these laws that were never, like, passed by the government. Yeah. But our, you know, tradition shit, and then they got, uh, you know, tribes. It, 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 oh, my God. I, 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 my heart goes out to the men of India. You guys are getting double slammed, butt fucked with a fucking boomerang cock block <laughs> to yourselves. <laughs> I, I can't even attach enough bad words to what's happening to those men over no. there. No. Holy it's, shit. Yeah, feminism has arrived in India, and it is poisoning everything and there's been a lot of cases where women accuse men of shit and then the men in the area kill that dude yeah and, and then, then they find out, out it's a lie and they don't do anything to the woman oh but women don't lie oh yeah hashtag believe all women right now, now, let, let, let's just get this straight <clears throat> the women of the west have forgotten just how powerful the punani is <laughs> i'll give you an example well, when you tank its value by giving it out for free. Uh, listen, hang on. <laughs> All right. Way, way back in the beginning, when you look at the holy books, there was a place called Eden. <clears throat> mm, and yes. the man upstairs populated it with a man and a woman. Now, the man upstairs built everything from, I don't know, light? <laughs> That's pretty, pretty powerful and intimidating. And he only had one rule. One rule. Don't eat the apple. Well, what does old Eve do? She gives old Adam a taste of the poonanny. <laughs> and then she says, let's go eat that apple. How bad can it be? <laughs> what could go wrong? So the power of the poonanny back in the day was so powerful 
it literally influenced a guy a guy who was created by the man upstairs to go against the only rule the man upstairs had. That is the power of the punani. Men, stop it. Yes, All right. Sorry. Please, please stop it. Because otherwise. I award you no points. And may God have mercy on your soul. Because only God could. That's right. <laughs> oh, it just makes you want to drink, man. Well, that's that's kind of why we're here. Yeah. And I hope you all are joining us tonight with your beverages in hand, if you know what I mean. I got some... Uh, your beer? Got my black uh, coffee spiced rum here. A mixed drink? Yes. And a shot and a half of hard liquor. Outstanding. So together, it's about three and a half to four units of alcohol. And by the time I drive out of here, I'll be good. That's what we call a menagerie. That's right. <clears throat> That's right. And I can't say I'm shocked that this woman pulled this. Apparently, she was in a friends with benefits relationship uh-huh. with a 42 year old man. How old is she? 39. Baby, was... rabies age. A little bit. I mean, we're we're beyond the wall at this point. This woman's waxworks has already started to crustify. Yeah. And she thinks, well, you know, this is my Hail Mary pass. Might as well give it a go. Yeah, 31 to, 31 to 41 is usually baby uh, baby rabies years. <laughs> I'll write that down. Baby rabies, yeah. And this next one here, I just deliberately didn't send it to you because this is, I think the Babylon Bee won the internet with this story. <clears throat> all right. It is a brilliant piece of satire, and this flies in the face of all the leftoids and screeching harpies pissed off about the SCOTUS leak. Here we go. Are we ready? Oh, yeah, bring it. Here we go. Report. Man who would kill a kid so as to not be stuck with you, probably not husband material. <laughs> wow! There you go. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to be honest. Uh, when it comes to the reproductive rights of men, they, they just don't exist. Exactly. But you, you you pull this out, and all of a sudden people are like, oh, so that's what they mean? Oh. Well, that's <laughs> offensive and misogynistic. How dare you? We need to censor the Babylon Bee again, we? <laughs> yeah, Wow. I mean, seriously, if a dude, you know, knocks up a chick, whatever, I'm going to keep the baby. Fine. Nine months later, shows up at the hospital room in California, Stan, you know, where now it's legal to murder your own child up to 28 days after its birth, right? He takes one look at the kid, and he's like, yeah, he's kind of cute, but I don't want to talk to you. Space Ghost is on. Wow. Yeah, listen, uh, any woman out there who's willing to kill a kid to keep her... Basically, her freedom. Not, not, don't marry those bitches ever. No. That should be one of the questions you need to ask these ladies, and you need to be upfront about it. Look them in the face and go, listen, I need to know this right now. And if I find out you ever lied to me about this question, I don't care if you're married for one year or 100 years, I'm out. Have yeah. you ever had an abortion? If she says yes, you know, thank her for her answer, and then ghost because you don't need that in your life. No. Yeah, no even even not. if she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, it was terrible, blah, blah, blah. That's a lot of bad karma. Yeah. You don't need to invite that into your life. Put up a wall and say, eh, you just stick to your own. Yeah. And all these women, you know, the, the <clears throat> ones who are even, they have a remote nugget, you know, like a, some lonely atrophied synapses up in their thinking meat still actually fires on half a cylinder of logic. They'll say, well, what about the women who have like a medical problem and the incest and the rape? And well, First of all, none of that is the kid's fault. All right. Well, uh, this, is, this I got, is where you and I disagree. Yeah. If it's incest or rape and something like that were to take place. Well, I'm not saying that I disagree. Oh, yeah. I'm saying it's not. The, I get, it it's not it's, the it's kid's still fault. not the kid's fault. No, ever. <clears throat> but at the same time, you can agree with that point one thousand percent. You would still eliminate. It turns out uh, the vast majority of abortions. Because here we go. The state of Florida records a reason for every abortion that occurs within its borders each year. And in 2020, there were 74,886. This table lists each reason. 
and the percentage of abortions that occurred because of it. Oh, here we go. 74.9% gave no reason. 20.4% aborted for social or economic reasons. So 95% of yep. all divorces, or not divorce, of, of all, all abortions. Abortion, well, divorce is an abortion. Yep. And then you have 1.88%, the woman's psychological health was threatened by the pregnancy. 1.48, her physical health was threatened by the pregnancy. Okay. I and can... then less than a percent, there's a serious fetal abnormality. Point mm -hmm. two percent, her life was endangered by the pregnancy. Point one five percent rape. Point zero one percent incest. <laughs> wow. So if we can agree on those things, sure, that's fine. We will still eliminate ninety five percent of all abortions, and I'm totally cool with that. Yeah, and you know what? You can still have the same result. It's called the morning after pill. A little bit. And uh, listen, if if you think some craziness went on, and or things went a little uh, out of control, and uh, you know something was delivered right to the warehouse, just take the morning after pill, clear the inventory out, and start over. Yeah. Okay, it happens. We. And I love it. It's like, well, I didn't know that I was pregnant. Like, how the fuck I, is that even possible? I love that. Like, how? Okay. I don't get it. I, I guess. All right, hang on. Possible? Is it, <laughs> is it or is it not your semi-permanent home here on the planet? The meat suit that you do, the meat suit that you donned when you were born, and you carry around every day, twenty-four-seven, three-sixty-five. Minus extenuating circumstances. If you have to say yes to that, and something is happening within your meat suit and you're oblivious to it, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> okay, it's not like you know, it's not like you have a cancerous tumor that's growing inside you and it has no symptoms until it starts to like rub on something. Got it. Uh, this is this is like oh, I thought it was gas. Like women get a warning once a month. Yeah. Either you're on or you're off. Mm -hmm. At the end of the month comes, you start bleeding and don't die. You proved you can't be trusted, but you're not pregnant. Yeah. Now, there's exceptions to every rule. Yes. There's always abnormalities. I actually know someone who was pregnant already, <clears throat> and for some reason, her, uh, her ovaries just kept firing shit. Mm. Next thing you know, she got twins. One of them is a ginger with green eyes, and the other one is a brunette with brown eyes. And I'm like, it happens. And they were technically conceived weeks apart. Technically. Technically. Allegedly. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> so there's always going to be exceptions to that rule. But that's one of the funniest things about Orn Pay is that I stumbled across this one day, you know, doing research purposes, of course. Of course. Apparently there's a whole uh, category out there of Orn Pay called the, uh, I, I guess the Three Stooges would know it the best, the cream pie surprise. Oh, yeah. How is that a surprise? Like, dude's finished, he's in his, you know, he's already across the room wiping up, you know, he's just basically just trying to stay awake. And <laughs> she, she, you, you fucking, hey, hey, like, you couldn't, you couldn't tell? Well, is, is your wax works so beaten up from you taking that chainsaw vibrating lightsaber to it that you can't actually tell? I'm going to be honest here. Wow. <clears throat> <laughs> If you are trying to negotiate with a man the rules of the encounter, it's probably not going to work out for you. <laughs> you should probably put protection in place and then address the issue if, if it, it goes outside those parameters. Yeah. But if you're like, you know, I can't tell how many times women are like, you know, I'm Ooh. not on the pill. Then why are you doing this? Yeah. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Yeah. yeah I, I remember I was with a chick. Uh, once upon a time, and uh, redhead seems to be a common theme today, and uh, we're doing our deal, and then all of a sudden she's like, oh, I really wish you could, are you on the pill? No, that ain't happening. <laughs> Whoa. No, thank you. Hey, listen, man, all it takes is like two or three of those super commando sperms <laughs> to run their ass up there and turn you into a wage slave for 21 years. That's right, man. All you need is one Rambo sperm to, to, to storm the line, and That's next thing you know. Not even that. They're sneaky. <laughs> you know, it's a recon sperm. 
Nobody. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? It happens. Yeah. Well, the condom broke. There's usually a warning before that happens. You know, it, it that does happen. It's it does ha- happen. It's happened to me twice in my it, life. It's now. only ever happened to me once, though, where I didn't realize it happened. The rest of the time, I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then I'm like, I, like oh, well, it's just you know, whatever. Like, no, if it starts to feel like it's cutting off your circulation, dudes, change it oh, and give the lady some lube. Because that's what's going on. Ah, uh, I think I <laughs> disintegrated them with uh, the angry inch treatment. <laughs> I, I was a little, I was inexperienced. The angry inch. So you get in there like. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, it breaks. You don't even know it. You're like, oh, that was great. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last in line for that jelly donut, huh? Yeah. Damn it. I got lucky though. <laughs> thank God. Because it could have been very bad. Because that woman was less than desirable. Well, yeah, and you know. I had to drink her up to a seven. <laughs> and what was she prior to drinking her up to? Said About seven, a five, five and a half, uh, average then. Yeah, yeah that's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, we're just trying to give you a little bit of levity, dudes. There's a lot of shit going wrong in the world right now, and one of the things that can go worst for you is divorce. And with that in mind, we're going to jump over to our sponsor for tonight's stream. We got Thomas Fitzgerald and his book, Men's Guide to High Conflict Divorce. Mm-hmm. Self-deletion rates among men skyrocket after a divorce, but you're not alone. Remember, to prepare yourself for the long game needed to survive a divorce with this book, Men's Guide to High Conflict Divorce. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle right now. Link is in the Meat Gazer box. Caught you looking, you power bottoms. All right. All right. Listen, man, the divorce of today is not is no fucking joke. I mean, like in the 70s, people got divorced a lot, but a lot of the, the laws that were – the draconian laws that are smashing men today didn't exist then they really started to come into their own right around 1985 to 1990 and it like they quite literally wipe the rash the constitution uh they violate the rules of men on you know virtually every day and there's no recourse yeah because they fall back on this nebulous term best interest of the child and there is no legal definition of that term no, just so we're clear. Yes. And what they really mean is, well, let's just be logical. The best interest of a child would be to be in the care of the parent who can afford to support that child on their own. Eighty-five uh-huh. percent of the time, that is not what happens. I know, but this, listen, I'm a man, and I think about everything logically. Granted, the kids go live with the mother. The mother will will nurture them and love them. And then right around 11-ish, when the kids start to develop their own mind, and they become unresponsive to the female. And then they go off the fucking rail. Yep. Because a lot of times, when a, a boy gets between 10 and 12, the mother will be like, he's your son, educate him. Yeah. He needs, like, the nurturing phase is over. Yes. Now we need logic and tough love. Uh-huh. Kids aren't getting that, and that's where you get the skyrocketing crime rates, the daycare generation. You know, everybody's being raised in daycare, 25 kids to one adult, and yeah. the only way they can get attention is to throw a temper tantrum, and then you wonder why we got two years straight of burning, looting, and murdering. Yeah, it's time for our country to go back to the good old-fashioned ways. And that is boot to ass. Boot to ass. I've had, I've received in my life probably a good dozen boot to the ass. And you probably deserved and needed every single one of them. I sure did. There you go. And there's, there's, no, there's no hard feelings. No. It, you know, I, I, I mean, as an adult, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of fucked up. <laughs> it reminds me of my cousin Vinny. You know, yeah. Like, oh, I'll get my ass kicked to collect $200. <laughs> I could use a good ass kick, and I'll be very honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually said that before to people. Yeah. They'd be like, well, I'm going to fucking kick your ass. And I'm like, you know, it's been a while since I enjoyed a thorough ass beating. <laughs> could you please give me one? <laughs> and then, you know, afterwards you rate it on a scale of one to ten, right? Yeah. yeah well, it was a moderately satisfactory ass beating. I'll give it a 4.5 out of 10. Well, you know, in, like in Washington State, right? Yeah. Oh no, in New York State, 
their laws are insane. You can get charged with all kinds of crazy stuff just for arguing with people. Of course. Yeah. All right. now, and now in Canada, you can get you know, thrown in jail for arguing on Twitter. Well, in this particular one, I was at uh, Saranac Thursday, and it's like a brewery in Utica, New York, and then a, a big soiree every Thursday. And there's a couple drunk guys, and they're just running their suck holes. <laughs> Shocker. Being complete a-holes. And then I, you know, I, we have a little uh, tiff. We leave. They follow us out. And there was an altercation. People got thrown on the ground. Uh, there was some judo moves in, employed. No, no punches to the face, mostly to the body and a kick to the balls. The cops are all over us. They're like, yeah, how do you see your ID? And I pull up my military ID. And they look at it, and they're like, oh, you're on active duty? They're like, you have a good day. And then I got, let me go with a pass. <laughs> well, boy. That's exactly, yeah. Yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. But we love the military stories. Oh, that's stories. a good one right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. It's one of those painted on ones. Like, how is that? It can't be real. Physically possible. It's not real. It can't be real. I've seen stuff like I this in it. person. <laughs> I deny it's real. Stop talking. Admit nothing, deny everything, and always have a counter accusation. That's right. <laughs> that, that, that shit is way out of my price range anyway. I don't need that aggravation. Yep. I had, we have to discuss this because after finding one crazy-eyed fucking wacko feminist last week who actually supports Amber Heard, you and I were talking. Uh -huh. The other day about how this is not only the death nail of the Me Too movement, but there are feminists out there who are still supporting this woman despite a mountain of evidence proving that everything out of her mouth is just so big fucking lies. Pure bullshit. The Let's only thing that doesn't come out of her mouth that's bullshit is the semen she swallows. This woman, Amber Heard, the turd. <laughs> turd, From turd, turd. What I have seen in the court and the evidence that was presented. Johnny Depp's life was a living fucking nightmare. Yep. And I'm sure he only banged that woman probably in their entire relationship 60, 70 times. That is definitely not worth the... No. I mean, in this case, you would have to do a pimp tard wife statute that would take into account all the money he lost. Yes. As a result of smashing and, that And pink future pocket. earnings. Yeah. I, I, I don't even know. Oh, wow, well, that's going to be a, that is a weird equation. I should like, <laughs> I should start working. On Lost that. wages from the Poo Nanny where it, it disappears into the Bermuda Triangle, never to be seen again. Yeah. And, and then we have to add in uh, Johnny's legal fees. Yep. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's gonna, It's not going to be as expensive as uh, Bezos. No, no, no. He's, he's going to be a winner and champion it, forever. Yeah. It's, but he was only married to her for what, 14 months? Yeah, it was very, very short. I mean, and the fact that we're still hearing about this, I oh mean, my this God. has been years. It's insane. Yeah, six years. Just think of that. Johnny Depp, who's filthy rich, it took him six fucking years to get here, and he got shot down in England and a couple other court cases he tried to file, and they were shot down. Six years what chance do average people like you and I have? My advice to you is this. Don't ever get married. Do your own fucking thing. Improve your life. Don't look for your mission or your purpose between the legs of a woman. No. And ironically, by doing just that, you'll have poon throwing itself at you hand over balled up fist if you well, know for I mean. a while you will yeah yeah until you get about mid 40s and then it dies off and then it's yeah. done by 55 yeah but i'm saying if if that's what that's your bag and you just want to you know hit it casually and move on just use a fake name and wrap your tool or just be honest there's yeah. women out there like oh yeah sure yeah, no problem yeah. I mean, Scott McTabish, how's it going? I'm, I'm a bad liar. I don't, think, I don't know if I can pull that off. <laughs> That's why you retired from the infantry and not the CIA. Correct. Oh, but we got a lot of good liars here because it, at this point, with the mountain of evidence that's out there, if you're still supporting Amber, you are a liar. And worst of all, you're lying to yourself. Well, and here's another thing. Is there trying to use this case that, that, that Johnny's doing right now, and they're like... Well, if they come down and, and hammer Amber, then that'll be a hell of a chilling effect 
on people who were legitimately sexually assaulted and repaid. No, it won't. That is the most pathetic bullshit excuse, and they pull it out every single time one of these high-profile penis sheaths gets caught lying like a yeah, rug. And I'm not talking right. about the rug they used to munch on when they were a free spirit in college. Yep. But my thing is this, is like women have been getting a free pass for acting like absolute fucking lying cunts for do dozens <laughs> or if not, you know, two or three decades and they get away with it because the judge is like, well, you know, I, if I really hammer this person and all other women will uh, not come forward when they're repaid or sexually assaulted. That is absolutely incorrect. If it's a true yep. repay, these women need to come forward. Yeah. They should come forward. And if it was legitimate beatdown rape, the dude who did it yeah. needs to be buried under the fucking jail. Because yep. I do not condone that at all. Yeah, and there may be some, you know, there might be some people. Just dropped against student accused of falsely reporting rape. Why? Three felony counts dropped over concerns that the case could discourage survivors from reporting their attack, district <clears throat> attorney said. There it is. Yeah, there it is. There's the free pass. That is such horseshit. Yeah, and and look when you when you really look at the sexual assault stats, more men are raped than women. Yep, because they ignore all the shit that takes place in prison. Mm -hmm. And just when you ignore unreciprocated domestic violence, mm -hmm. <laughs> you all of a sudden you completely just overlook the fact that most of the victims of domestic violence are men. Yeah, when I was younger, I, I had a couple girlfriends that were uh, that were kind of slappy. <laughs> I always slapping me shit, and I They're never going after you with them, a baseball bat. Well, most of the time, I'm like I'm holding like a burger, and I'm like eating, and she's like yelling at me like, "Yeah, shut up!" Because <laughs> they can't do anything to you. No, no. I mean, I was 22, uh, 5'11", you know, one eighty six percent body fat. I benched over two times my body weight. Like, yeah, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> and I, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And then, she, then they start picking up stuff and throwing it. Like, all right, I'm leaving. Or chase you down the street with a giant blue dildo. <laughs> <laughs>
that someone who's never had that kind of problem all of a sudden develops it. Yeah, you don't magically become a wife beater in your 50s. Yeah, and even like some of these like, recordings, Johnny's like, I need to leave. Yeah. I need my peace. Leave me alone. I'm leaving. And so he slams a couple cupboard doors. He's mad. What does he do? He fucking leaves. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Yep. When you when you're losing your mind or anger is, is now in the control room pushing buttons and turning wheels <laughs> and take you all kinds of crazy places. Yeah. You, you kindly push away from the table. Bye-bye. I need to take a moment. Yeah. And then you walk out and then in your mind you beat the shit out of anger and put him <laughs> back in the goddamn boiler room shoveling coal into the fire. That's all he ever does. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what is it with me and my rants? Uh, I mean, his ex-wife, the person that you would think would have the most modus operandi to come out and say, "Hey, yeah, he was a dick bag to me." It's like, no, she no. said flat out, "That is not the Johnny that I knew and loved." That's right. Talking about the shoplifter, why not a rider? In case you didn't know. Uh, plus, he was he was with another woman for like fourteen years or something. Something like that, yeah. And he's kind of a serial monogamist, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, granted, that is a that is a shortfall, but it, it doesn't make him a beat a, a wife beater. No, and, and he's politically he's a dick bag. Yes, and you and I don't agree with anything <laughs> no, that comes out a, of his he's mouth. He's an asshole. But in this case, the facts are the facts, and the facts are in his favor. And listen, end of story. You know, how many times have we heard stories about actors or real famous people being alcoholics and having a drug problem? All right, it yeah, happens shocker. all the time. In Hollywood, that's nothing. Shocker. Yeah, there's like a rehab facility on virtually every block, every corner in, in L.A. Yeah, if you don't have a drinking and drug problem in Hollywood, you're kind of the outcast. As Absolutely fucked correct. up as that is. Absolutely correct. And, and But... I mean, it is true here what she said. It is true, but I guarantee you this. If it were to come out that Lindsay Lohan, who obviously has a substance abuse and alcohol problem, were to, you know, be a man-hating, you know, chase him down the street with a giant blue dildo kind of a domestic abuser, this same person would defend the ever-loving <coughs> shit out of her. I guarantee it. And why? Because of this tweet. Let's check it out. Right. Glitter Markers says, hashtag support Amber Heard, hashtag listen to women, hashtag Amber Heard. I support the most nastiest women in the world because behind her is a man in her life torturing the utter crap out of her. Hashtag feminist. Wow. Thank you for proving that they are all like that. Yeah, listen, and this is actually... Uh this is a good thing for for us, not for Johnny or or the turd. But the men are seeing exactly what is in store for them. Listen, Johnny Depp has got an insane amount of money. Yeah, he he te he ch checks all the blocks. It still wasn't good enough for this crazy narcissist, fucking dick sucking whore. Yeah, because she was cheating on him while while he was married there. Yep. All right. Same thing with Will Smith. I mean, how many of these top you know a-list actors who get torn apart by women do we need before men start saying this is crazy i'm out i yep. don't want to participate yep oh, i'm sorry i'm going off on all these rants oh no it's fine man i mean we're it's it's on topic and like we said you know johnny depp politically he's a bit of a dick bag mm-hmm that doesn't make him wrong in this instance, though. Like, this feminist biatcha here for, at Witch Uprising on Twatter, it is always absolutely inexcusable to support Roman Polanski. I agree. Johnny Depp is so exceptionally ignorant and sexist with this quote. That's correct. It doesn't make him a fucking abuser, though. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> Listen, you could be an asshole, a dick, you know, a complete fucking idiot. You still should not be thrown in prison and having your life destroyed for it unless you legitimately do that to other people. Yeah. And then it's a karma thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, and then you got bitches like this one, Laura at Mango Python. What happened to Johnny Depp was awful, but I hate how people are using this opportunity to be sexist. If he were a woman, this would have been different, as if we as a society care about women or something. Yeah, there's a reason why your tweet right. only has two likes, you fucking cunt. Hang on. All right. 
women enjoy an environment here in America in the West, which is the safest, most luxurious, you know, and protected th that they've ever been in all of human history that we can remember. Yep. And all they do is bitch, moan, and complain. Yeah. And, like, we're, we're terrible because we won't lie down on the ground and let them walk all over us 24-7, 365. Yeah, how dare you? Fuck that. Fuck them. Well, when you're used to special treatment, which women get from cradle to grave, equality feels like oppression. You are correct. Oh, boy. Whores. I, I, I don't even want to read this one, but I know we're going to have to do it. Mm. But, oh, hang on. I really like that one, but... Ah. Hang on. Somebody's got to take Stand one by. for the team. Stand by. Okay. Adequate. <laughs> uh, for now. Okay. Give it. I mean, that that's a very very rotund booty right there. Give it. Give it ten years. Well, I, I would say she is in her late twenties, developing saddlebagitis. It's going to get there pretty soon. She's going to have two mail bags on each hip. <laughs> Yeah. Now, as always, gentlemen, all resources and references are available on redonculus.com, including a bunch of episodes debunking virtually every mainstream Me Too thing that has ever come out. I actually forgot to put the Weinstein one in there, because mm. that's really what kicked off this new stage of feminism thinking that they're still relevant. But if you remember, October 2015, we did an episode called Proudman Pounding. I can't believe it was over seven years ago. Yeah, 2015, this chick, Charlotte <laughs> Proudman, actually she's Charlotte Bailey, but she decided that in order to get back at her father, who uh, gave his fortune away to cancer charities, although he still left her a sizable trust fund with which to go to university, that he was a bad guy because patriarchy. So she took her grandmother's name, Proud Man, ironic for a feminist, <laughs> because no one who's ever stuck even so much as a finger in that woman as a proud man I'm just saying okay and, and then i recall she was in uh she was finishing up law school seven yep. years ago and she's not even working in that profession now according to the article she is yep. getting her phd at 33 yep this was the story at the time this was september 2015 the feminazi versus the leering lawyer what female barrister who objected to linkedin compliments said sh as she ogled men on the web Bottom line, this dude is about 30 years her senior, mm -hmm. who she initiated a connection with on LinkedIn, uh -huh. complimented her profile photo. Oh, my God. And for some reason, this was news yeah. because it's sexist misogyny to give a woman a compliment now. And I can guarantee you this. She's getting her Ph.D. because the lawyers, the people who are actually in those positions... Yeah. Basically, probably, I, I, I'm a, as a gambling man, I can almost guarantee you she's fucking blackballed for that. Oh, I sincerely hope so. And I find it even funnier because when you look at this article, and I, I don't think we mentioned this at the time, she threw a fucking hissy fit over a dude who's a, a hyphenate, <laughs> Mr. Carter Silk. Oh, my God. So he's... Uh, uh, Probably a simp for whoever's name he took, and she still thought that the best way to break into a career in law was to blackball a 30-year veteran in his profession, and she thought that that wasn't going to backfire. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, um, I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of women who are been who bought into the whole feminist lie. Yep. Who are train wrecking their lives by the numbers. Yes. And if they, if they're totally unfortunate, they will awaken from this fog of uh, blasphemy and uh, uh, brainwashing in their forties, and yep. they'll be like, "Holy fuck, what have I done?" And then it's just a game of catch up. At that, at that point, it's too late. Though. Yeah, at forty, You're uh, listen, done. your fertility's gone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> listen, that saying I come up with: forty to eighty is a long fucking time, and that one is aimed strictly at these women out there who basically piss away their youth for whatever reason and wind up singing the blues when they're on their own. Yep. It takes a special brand to stupid. 
to look at a situation where you can literally move from your daddy's home into your husband's home, never have to work a difficult job a day in your life, and all you're really expected to do is keep a home, raise children, and cook meals. And somehow, while, while somebody is out there literally putting their life on the line, breaking their back for you every single day so you don't have to do it, it takes a special kind of stupid to call that oppression. <laughs> yes, it does. Because 95% of workforce deaths are still men. Mm. You don't really care about equality in that instance, do you? No. Ladies. You know, and when you bring that up to them, like, well, that's because men are stupid. Like, oh, God. Sure, sure. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that the, the jobs that they don't want equality in are things like, I don't know, roofing, you know, high wire construction, all this yeah. other stuff. Lumberjack. Listen, yep. I, I spent Mining. two summers during college doing tear-offs for roofers. Let me tell you. That sucked! <laughs> it was terrible. Oh, mm. both. I mean, I, I, there were a couple times that literally was almost a heat stroke. Oh, yeah. Fuck. It gets crazy up there on a roof. Yeah, that's, no, uh-uh. No, uh-uh. But let's do it. There we go. Charlotte Proudman writing for The Independent. Why do people blindly support Johnny Depp? I'll tell you why. As a barrister... Sure. I see many victims of domestic violence being sued for defamation, for daring to speak about what their perpetrator did to them. Meanwhile, the world questions whether they're a real victim. Well, when you've got 80 videos, audio recordings, eyewitnesses all proving that she's not a victim, in fact, she's the perpetrator, mm -hmm. it, it kind of tends to sway the public opinion a little bit. Yeah, like logic and reason affecting people out there. Yep. What, what's, what is the world coming to? Speaking of logic and reason, we're not going to read this whole thing because I can only handle so much stupid at any one time. But if you read this article, you will notice there is one particular subject that she refuses to address and, in fact, never even hints that it exists. Can you guess what that is? Evidence. That's correct. Yeah. Apparently, if Amber Heard says it's true, it has to be true. She yeah. doesn't address the recordings, the videos, none of it. Pound me too. <laughs> Believe all women. And then, of course, there was the, uh, the the makeup compact that she claimed she had to carry with her throughout their entire relationship that wasn't created until years after they had gotten divorced. 2017. <laughs> oh, it's such bullshit. Oh, yeah, I love this here. Uh, Depp lost his defamation claim in the High Court in London in 2020. Yes, because, you know, the High Court of London, you know, the place where they have an elected mayor who says that you should just get used to terrorist attacks as part of big city living. Yep. Um, they're totally <clears throat> trustworthy. Yeah. And they review all evidence without looking at your genitalia before making a decision. Now, if I, I recall, in England, in that court case, all of Johnny's text messages were accidentally introduced into evidence and none of Amber Heard's. Of course. And I, I love that's this. That's what I heard. I'm going to give this the uh, the bullshit treatment right uh -huh. here. Depp lost his defamation claim in the High Court in London 2020. He was greeted with adoring fans throwing roses at him, blowing kisses, and holding supportive banners. I stood next to him after we passed through security. He smiled and I gave him my best dead eyes. I'm sure that's not very hard for her. Well, considering she has no soul. Well, she's a brainwashed fucking cunt. Well, yes, she twant. is. This is a woman she's a who twant. Is, yeah, this is a woman who is on record finally admitting what we already know, that feminism and equality have nothing to do with each other. No, it's domination. In, in fact, she actually says that feminism is, or actually, equality is harmful to men and women. <laughs> so they want special treatment, but yet they steep... They keep uh, wanting uh, this equality thing. It, yep. Yeah, it does, they don't mix. This is just, everything in this paragraph, by the way, has been debunked by the evidence. Okay. The judge later found that Depp physically assaulted her, including headbutting her, tearing out clumps of her hair, and holding her by her neck. And she said she had feared for her life. All of that's been debunked. Lies! Depp is alleged to have sent texts to his friend, Paul Bettany threatening to burn Heard and fuck her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she is dead. Now, I hadn't heard about this. Have you heard about I, this? I've heard about this, yeah. yeah. Well, when you actually read the texts, it's obvious that they're making a joke about her being a witch. Yeah, they're fucking around, and a lot of the stuff they're talking about are actual lines from movies. Yes, and this is uh, The Guardian, who Charlotte Proudman also writes for them, that disgusting whore. But, uh, yeah, one message sent in 2013 made lewd reference to Heard's beaver, 
Uh, that's when you know you're dating yourself is when you still call it a beaver. Uh, and discussed her murder by burning or drowning. That's not what they were doing. Well, and that you do that to witches. Yes. I'm not sure we should burn Amber, wrote Pet- Bettany. She's delightful company and pleasing on the eye. We, of course, could do the English course of action and perform a drowning test. Thoughts? You do have a swimming pool. And Depp replied, oh, let's drown her before we burn her. I'll fuck her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she's dead. To which Bettany apparently wrote back, my thoughts entirely. Let's be certain before we pronounce her a witch. <laughs> obviously a joke. Yes. Yeah. But apparently that's enough. Hey, you listen, I'm, listen, you got to be careful what you put in text because they could take this stuff out of context in court and fuck oh, you Oh, it's over. very true. And obviously we have a feminist here who is only looking at what she wants to look at, mm-hmm. has no evidence to support her claim whatsoever aside from sarcastic text messaging between friends. And she ignored all the evidence anyway. Yes. And by the way, these are the same people who will defend hashtag kill all men as a joke. Yeah, just so we're clear. And they get to keep their twi- <laughs> they get they, they got to keep their Twitter accounts, yep. their Facebook accounts, their YouTube videos. Yeah. It's a bunch of bullshit. Oh, and I love this here. It is telling that Depp is dragging her through a second high-profile trial in the U.S. hoping for a better outcome. He is suing her for a whopping 50 million. This looks to me like serious financial control. So she's falling back on the Duluth model here, oh, yeah. which is Quite literally, if you follow the Duluth model, anything a man does can be classified as domestic violence. Yeah. Amber Heard Mm -hmm. is not a victim. Wanting her to be one so you can claim your bullshit ideology still has relevance when it is deader than hammered shit doesn't magically make her one. Yeah. Charlotte. Old turd is a cunt and this woman's a twant. Yes. A twat cunt. I wish she would go make like Charlotte the Spider. Go lay eggs and crawl off somewhere into a dark hole and pass away. Expire. (laughs) (laughs) This is pathetic. Aggravating. Uh, Yeah, you go through this whole article. She refuses to address the evidence at all. All she talks about is the cross-examinations. Depp's lawyer has used as a paw and a weapon to re-victimize her for the world's entertainment. Well, that part is true enough. Like, well, the world's entertainment part, at least. That's hilarious. I'm going to be honest. After I heard all of the fucking fucked up shit she did to, to Johnny, I am glad. I am I am ecstatic that yeah. they're twisting the knife in her back now. Yeah, because he wasn't allowed to introduce a lot of this evidence in the London trial. Uh-huh. And guess what? She's 36. It's over for her. Oh, she's done. She's done. She is a done Tom like turkey. Her primary earning years in Hollywood for 22 to 32. Yep. And uh, she's expended a lot of time fighting this case. And a lot of people from Hollywood have been subpoenaed to testify. And they're extremely unhappy about it. They don't want to be caught in the middle of this horse shit. Uh, she's, I, I, as a betting man, I would say she's done. Yeah. Hey, this is such horse shit, man. Oh, listen to this here. Ugh. So when I see hashtags trending on Twitter like Amber Heard is a liar, I realize how deeply entrenched misogyny is in our society. It doesn't matter that there's a high court decision proving that Depp assaulted her. That actually doesn't prove anything. Because if it was a high court decision proving that he assaulted her, guess where he would be? He'd be in jail. Jail. It was civil. It was First of all, it was a civilian suit. It wasn't a criminal suit. Exactly. It didn't prove shit. Uh-uh. Uh, all you can prove is like wrongful something, wrongful intent, even mm. in in these situations. It's, it's a bunch of whole horse shit. And her as a barrister, which is just British lawyer, in name only. Uh, yeah, yeah, name bar- barrister and name only. Because now she's a PhD, which you know she wouldn't have to be if she was able to get a job as a lawyer. Which she can't because <laughs> she blackballed herself <laughs> with her fucking. Uh, dick suckers yeah i really wish this uh fucking flunt would close her piss flaps and if you forget what flunt means it means fat loose useless and nuptial taint a flunt i love (laughs) flunt this woman is vile i mean it it really takes a, a level almost of talent to turn your back on reality so completely uh-huh. That you can tune out audio recordings, video evidence, eyewitnesses. None of those things Amber Heard was able to produce that weren't edited for content. Yep. Yeah, she had one video edited, sent to TMZ, 
magically Johnny Depp is the devil. And he's, I don't know how many millions of dollars lighter as a result of that. Well, he, he gave her $7 million to get out of his life yep. that she did not donate like she said she was. Uh, after this expose was published, Johnny virtually lost all of his jobs. Yep. And I'm going to be honest, I'm glad uh, Disney's taken it on the chin for like two major franchises are now dead because yep. of uh, their firing of Johnny Depp. Yep. Like literally, f Fantastic Beasts, done. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, done. Those are those are very expensive to make, and they did not get their return. Yep. So guess what? If somebody's like, let's make another one, sooner or later, they're like, there's not enough money in the purse. We want exactly. something that's going to make money. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pathetic, man. And, and it goes deeper than this. Mm -hmm. Now, if Charlotte Proudman did any research, which she clearly doesn't do, so it's no shock that As a even, barrister? Yeah, even if she didn't blackball herself into oblivion with her bullshit on LinkedIn, I mean, there's no way she could be a competent lawyer. Probably not. She's a liar. Yep. Let's go down to the <laughs> comments in this. I want to see what people said in the comments. Oh, it's archived because you can't read it unless you pay for it. So oh. I can't look at the comments. Oh, okay. It sucks. Ah. But, oh, hang on. We already saw her. Ah, I do have some more, uh, you know, some of the research that she should have done. Okay. Let's check it out. Let's do it. At avoiceformen.com, false allegations of sexual abuse and divorce have become prevalent to the point that a name has been given. The SAID syndrome, S-A-I-D. Mm -hmm. Sexual allegations and divorce. In fact, with child custody disputes, some research indicates that up to 70% of domestic violence allegations are considered false. Literature reports that the prevalence of false allegations is up to 84% and approximately 85% of those are issued against men. Even if we go with the lower figure of 70%, that means over two-thirds of accusations are fabricated. The travesty in this number is that it represents individual parents. That means that numerous parents are wrongly accused and erroneously experience unadulterated devastation and destruction due, a, due to a blatant misrepresentation of the facts by their ex or soon-to-be. Mm -hmm. The misuse of restraining orders is also an unfortunate trend. The power of false allegations of abuse in family court is undeniable. In a majority of cases, the use of false allegations stems from a high-conflict personality and other personality disorders of the accusing parent. What was Amber Heard diagnosed with by her psychologist? Uh, what? what? There was like two Borderline or personality disorder. Yeah, she's she's one nar bipolagistic bitch, man. Yep. Gee, Charlotte, it's almost like when you bother to look at the facts, you'd realize that you're completely full of shit. But I'm going to tell you this right now. A, vo a voice for men .com, anything you put on here, they will totally disregard and disbelieve yep because the person behind this is paul elam and i believe he is like on uh, the bad boy list at the adl yep and all all he's doing is stand up for men's rights yeah and uh that's okay though because we also have the national library of medicine oh here we go because you know you can't have me too without false rap hey allegations right and this is a study that we've quoted many times, but this is the first time that I've seen it at the NIH. So somebody has been doing their homework. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. This is the Canaan study from 1994 conducted in cahoots with, I believe it was Purdue University and the Air Force. Uh -huh. With the cooperation of a police agency of a small <laughs> metropolitan community, 45 consecutive disposed false rape allegations covering a nine-year period were studied. These allegations constitute 41% of all cases reported during that period. And wow. these allegations appear to serve three major functions for the complainants, providing an alibi, seeking revenge, and obtaining sympathy and attention. False rape allegations are not the consequence of a gender-linked aberration as frequently claimed, but reflect impulsive and desperate efforts to cope with personal and social stress situations. Yeah! Wow. Yep. Holy facts. Shit. Yeah. It's amazing what you can find when you look up facts. And here's another thing they'll do. <laughs> well, that study's from 1994. Well, that doesn't matter now. It's so old. Listen. Well, you know what's older than that? Yeah. The only 2% of rape allegations are false 
statistic. And I put statistic in quotes because it actually comes from a fictional book written in the 1970s called Against Her Will. And the claim in that book was never sourced. Yep. So there is no proof that only 2 to 10% of rape allegations are false. Well, uh, there's way more than that, but because they don't want to like piss off the, the world, it's called uh, unfounded. Yeah. You ask any cop, they will tell you, and you ask them, what is the number one crime that is falsely reported? They will not hesitate. Rape. It's actually now sexual assault. But. Yeah, because they have to change the language so that it can mean, you know, getting beat down in the alleyway and forcefully penetrated. And that's the same thing, apparently, as accidentally touching your butt in the elevator. That's right. Yeah. You're in the elevator and it's too crowded and you bump into a woman and your back rubs on her tits. Dead. You're going to jail. Yep. You want to know how you can tell when the left is losing the debate? They move the goalposts. Absolutely. They do it every time. Remember in the 70s, there's another ice age coming. Uh, that's not happening. Right. Oh, uh, global warming in the 90s. Uh, that's not happening. Uh, glo average global temperature's actually gone down by a couple degrees. Oh, well, we'll just call it climate change then. 2010 comes along. Then we're never wrong. <laughs> Leftist 101, move the goalposts. Move the goal. They have moved the goalposts so far. They have now exited the stadium and they're in the middle of the freeway outside and cars have to like figure out a way to snake around that shit. Yep. <laughs> oh lordy. Oh this goodness is some gracious. Serious bullshit right here. Oh yes it is. Hmm. And I mean Me Too has been dead since 2019. 2020 ish. 2020 ish. Um, it, it died as soon as this article came right, out. Hang on. Before we get into this, let's do a roll call real quick. Let's see where we are. Oh, okay. We're going to do that before we go to new tech. Okay. That's just fine by me. How's everybody doing tonight? I hope you're enjoying the stream. We got 88 currently watching over on Twitch, 64 on D Live, 71 on Odyssey, 658 currently watching on Rumble. Hope everybody's having a good time and behaving themselves. Yes. <laughs> uh, YouTube has 941 currently watching, but only 524 likes. Whoa! What 50, the, come, come on, on man! You need to smash that shit. If you don't, I'm going to have Amber Heard come and poop in your bed. And 48 on MGTOW.TV. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. But yeah, if you want to know when, let's say this article and other feminist reactions like it, because I want to say the chick who actually pioneered the hashtag MeToo movement, you know, she said that there was no way that we could find Brett Kavanaugh, you know, that he could admit it right now. And he, we still couldn't possibly put him on the Supreme Court. It's terrible. Well, Tara Reid uh -huh. comes along. And not only does she have the record to back it up, but there's a 30-year-old phone call on Larry King proving that this she, was known at the time. Yeah, she, was, she talked about it virtually uh, within days of it happening to her. Yep. Yeah. But all of a sudden, Joe Biden can be accountable and electable. Ugh. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. I love this. I believe Tara Reid. I'm voting for Joe Biden anyway. This is even worse. The importance of owning an ugly moral choice. Isn't that <laughs> all feminist choices? Yeah, I would think so. I love this. Let's be clear. I believe Tara Reid. I believed Anita Hill, too. Remember the buttons? I wore one. What's the constant here? Joe Biden, then the bumbling head of the Senate Judiciary Committee during the Clarence Thomas confirmation hearings, now the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee. Mm. Long before Miss Reid, before the reports of the rubbing and the sniffing. There weren't reports. We have videos yeah, he's of the, the rubbing and the sniffing. He's the rub and tug uh, president. He's the fresh prince of smell hair. <laughs> I interviewed an advisor to Ms. Hill who said she tried to warn Mr. Biden of what was happening in the Thomas hearings, how unchecked Republicans were smearing an upright woman's character. But the un United States Senate was still very much a boys club back then, the advisor told me, and there was no getting through to him. Democratic primary voters knew all about Mr. Biden's membership in that boys club when there was still time to pick someone else. Alas. So what's a girl to do now? Discounting Miss Reed's accusation and one after another denigrating her corroborating witnesses, calling for endless new evidence and avowing that you hear her is nonsense. Uh. We are now up to four corroborating witnesses, including one contemporary corroborating witness unearthed by Rick McHugh, who was Ronan Farrow's producer at NBC News during the Harvey Weinstein reporting and one Larry King live tape. I'll take one for the team. I believe Miss Reed, and I'll vote for Mr. Biden this fall. 
Me Too, dead. That's right. They only uh, use the Me Too for, against people that they want to get rid of. Yeah, and, and never mind the fact that you know prior to this, you know we're talking like back in, you know the, the, when Monica Lewinsky, you know, got her cigar enema or whatever it was. Oof. Democrats, you know, the believe all women people, all of a sudden magically. She was the instigator. She was the predator. She yeah. was the problem. And you know who was the ringleader in that? It was Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. And she, man. And you know what? Uh, I believe old, um, was it the former president had a out of wedlock child who was mysteriously Hillary Clinton. Yep. It's Wow. Quite ridiculous. Oh, that is some savage, ugly, brutal shit. Yeah, right but don't forget. No, here we don't go. Don't forget. You need to believe all women, and women, of course, never lie about rape. <laughs> oh my God! Woo! Here we go. Yeah. Women don't cry rape. Uh, just bullshit. Just saying. All the people now who are back to screaming "My body, my choice." Uh -huh. Six months ago, wanted you to get fired from your job and lose your livelihood for refusing the poke. Because that, yeah, because they wanted to be a big pharmaceutical shill. Uh huh. They wanted to be. They wanted everyone to be a part of that thirty-nine billion dollar profit, and that's just for Pfizer. But but the thing here, you're talking about those people out there who are just useful idiots. They fall for everything. That's exactly what, what's going on here. Yep. Mm. Useful idiots! Ah! Useful idiots indeed. Yep. Hey, you know, we, all, we know what happens to the useful idiots. They wind up in a landfill. Night of the brown shirts. Yeah. Well, in Night of, Night of the Brown Shirts, they just went and uh, cut the head off the snake. They didn't kill everyone. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, if you really want to, if you want to develop, I mean, if, if you're not quite sure you want to continue life in Joe Biden's America and you want to give yourself some, a bit of brain cancer, you can read this article. Because I'll, I'll read you just a sample. Uh, Holy shit. Even go. in this groundbreaking Me Too movement, the age-old myth that a woman who says she was rapid as a liar, covering up a regretted act of consensual sex, remains as popular as ever. Because it's true. In Dave Chappelle's new comedy special, The Bird Revelation, he jokes that if Harvey Weinstein looked like Brad Pitt, he would not have been accused of assault and rape. He's right. Pretty much. If you remember Asia Argento, you know, the one who, uh, after claiming that Harvey Weinstein rapped her at the Cannes Film Festival... Oh, and by the way, she kept going back for seconds and thirds after that, because yep. that's what you do when you've been yeah. sexually assaulted, right? Of course. Of course. And, and, you know, she's a champion of the Me Too movement, and then it turns out she was sleeping with an underage kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Not, not really believing it now. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, but when you choose to sleep with someone in a position of power because you think it's going to further your career, that's regret sex, not rape. It is Worst case is. scenario, it's a choice. But the myth of the woman who falsely cries rape should never serve as a punchline. I've been tracking slut shaming when women and girls are labeled sluts and hoes for over two decades, interviewing hundreds of teenage girls and women who have been ostracized, harassed, and assaulted as a result of their sexual reputation. And you're going to conveniently leave out the part where the people doing the ostracizing, harassing, and assaulting for their, for their reputation are women. Or probably other women. Men don't do that. Well, we'll just say, oh, you have you have a Clinton body count? Well, I'm not going to marry that. I'll, right. I'll entertain it for seven to ten minutes, and I'll give you a fake name, but no. I'm not writing a check against when it. When men are, like, in high school <laughs> and they find that stuff out, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll mess with chicks for that, make fun of them and stuff. Yeah. But when you get older, it's a non-issue for men. Women are the ones who are going around calling slut against virgins because they just don't want the competition. Hey, look, uh, they want to compete with traditional women, and traditional women will probably always defeat them in the end. Amen Because they're selling used-up goods that they gave away for free. Mm -hmm. And once again, just like Charlotte Proudman, you go through this entire article, where are the sources? Where are the studies? Oh, no, wait, it's all anecdotal bullshit. 
<laughs> no. It's not like just in the last decade alone we haven't seen the UVA hoax, Mattress Girl, the Weinstein debacle, the bullshit Bill Cosby trial. Oh, my God. <laughs> Michael Jackson. If you guys haven't seen Razor oh. Fist's dissection of the Cosby and Jackson trials, oh, man, you are missing out. You have to watch those. Uh, you know what? I'm wondering where the lawsuit is from, from Cosby against the state. That It needs it. to happen. It needs to happen. Because they admitted a testimony into court that was agreed upon to be sealed. Correct. You can't do that. Never mind the fact that the judge... Refused, who refused to uh, recuse himself from the case, made a bid for a judge specifically for the purpose of locking up Cosby. That's not a conflict of interest no, at all. Certainly not. It's Never. totally above board. Yeah. Look, and, if Cosby, oh. listen, if I was Bill Cosby and they let me out of jail for some bullshit, I would go to my grave suing the ever-loving snot at everyone involved. I would have formal complaints against those judges. You know, I mean, I would go full administrative violence on everyone fucking involved. You're damn right. And I would, ha and, and I would have the money to do it. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm. But, oh, hang on. Uh, ah, yeah. But... You know, we're in leftoid la-la land, right? Preponderance of accusers is magically enough to make someone guilty. Unless you're accusing the Clintons of murder. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 50 women accusing Bill Cosby of rap hay, ironclad evidence. 50 dead bodies, most of which were suicided with two bullet wounds in the back of the head. Coincidence. I think not. <laughs> It's I like think. puking on a pile of shit. That's pretty bad. <laughs> wow. 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 All right, ladies and germs, I think that we have arrived in time for a piss break, so we're going to drain the main vein, and then we are going to jump to new tech. We're going to read your super chats, and we're going to get into some fucked up but funny. Can you run a commercial for administrative violence? You're damn right I can. You guys want to see some administrative violence? You want to see some administrative violence, don't you? Now, before we go there, I want to talk about it real quick. Of course. This administrative violence course that I put together is a fucking game changer. Yes, it is. Okay. If you're tired of getting more of the same, you're tired of seeing your friends get more of the same, or you have friends who are looking at the hammer here, you need to get this course. Because yes. this, this is beyond cancer culture. Cancel cultural culture you get some people get together they make phone calls and send emails and keep people fired and turn their life upside down no 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 this is cancer cancer culture with a sniper rifle <laughs> you can wreak absolute fucking havoc yes on can. all of the people who are fucking you in this system are you ready there we go ready on the right yep. ready on the left yep. right in the center yeah let's do this did you know that 80% of divorces are filed by women? Wow! And most of the time, the men, they're caught completely by surprise. But the biggest surprise is what's waiting for these men in divorce and family court. Corrupt lawyers and judges, and they're all hiding behind that nebulous term, best interest of the child. Yeah, right turning men into wage slaves and pillaging your social security to pay for it. Oh, I understand, you don't believe me. Look up Title 4D and when you're done, pour yourself the hard stuff. If you are sick and tired of this happening, <laughs> this is the course for you. My name is Terrence Pop, retired army vet, evil genius, and unfortunately a non-custodial parent. I have lived through this hell personally. And as a good soldier, I want to make sure the men behind me get a fair shake. I have spent over 10 years researching this corrupt, broken system and advising men one-on-one -on -one the skills that I'm going to teach you. I took all of that and I created Administrative Violence, Divorce, and Custody Edition. This webinar includes over four hours of tutorials. Exclusive interviews with other men who survived this system, 
and a workbook so you can tie it all together. How military of me. For 200 bucks, I'm going to show you how to turn Western bureaucracy into your female breeding dog, if you know what I mean. And here's the best part. It's all legal. It's in the gray area, but let's not split hair, shall we? Administrative violence will be released on Memorial Day only on manopay.net. But here's the rub without the tug. It's only on sale for five days. And supporters on these sites are going to get a coupon code to save a little cash. So saddle up and get ready to level the playing field. <laughs> they wanted equality. I'm just making sure they get it. That's what I'm talking about. It's a fucking game changer. Damn if, right. If I convert this over to a book, it, it, it could be really big. Hell yeah, man. All right. We're going to jump to new tech. Make sure that you guys look for those links in the YouTube chat so you can follow us over to <laughs> rumble, MGTOW.TV, Odyssey, DLive, or Twitch, and we'll see you in five.